Hey, are your Blender shots looking a little flat and boring? Well, just because we're working in a digital world, doesn't mean we can't use the camera movements found in live-action cinematography to enhance our 3D shots. Thus, after a grueling 10 minutes of research, I compiled some of the most common and useful camera movements used in your favorite movies, so we could transfer them to Blender and get some cinematic shots. Cool? Okay, let's begin. Alright, let's start off with some basic pans and tilts. A panning shot and a tilting one are similar, since in both cases the camera has a fixed location and axis on which it rotates. The distinction, however, comes with how the camera rotates on this axis, since panning refers to a horizontal rotation, while tilting refers to a vertical rotation. This type of camera movement is pretty versatile, but more often than not, it's used to establish a location, follow a subject, or switch between one subject to another. With that being said, let's say we want a cinematic establishing shot to reveal our character in a new location. To do that, all you need to do is point your camera somewhere away from your subject and place a rotation keyframe. Then rotate your camera around the Z or X slash Y axis depending on whether you're going for a pan or tilt. Now Blender by default uses a bezier fit for the keyframe interpolation. So your camera movement will start the shot frozen, slowly speed up, and then slow down again to finish the movement. However, if you want to remove the speed up in the beginning of the movement, you can simply go to the graph editor, find the channel for the axis your camera was rotating about, and use the handles to remove the curve at the beginning. All in all, this should leave you with some cinematic panning slash tilting shots. Okay, now let's cover how to do a basic zoom. In cinematography, the zoom is often used to direct the viewer's attention to something important, or to build tension in a scene. Doing this in Blender is as easy as going to the focal length slider in the camera parameters and clicking I on it, which will allow you to keyframe the slider so that the camera zooms over time. Pretty easy. An interesting variation of the zoom is called the dolly zoom, which can build a sense of unnerving anticipation in your scene. To accomplish this, you can use the zoom animation you already have and animate the camera so that it moves in the opposite direction of the zoom. In other words, if you're zooming the camera in, you're going to want to also animate the camera moving away from the subject. And if you're zooming the camera out, you're going to want to animate the camera moving closer to the subject. With that simple step, you can add even more intensity and a unique flair to your regular zoom. Okay, now let's move on to something a little more involved with tracking shots. As the name implies, tracking shots are used in cinematography to follow or track a moving subject via moving the camera in the same direction as the subject. In other words, just think of every Tom Cruise running shot you've ever seen and you get the idea. Most often, this type of shot is used to help the viewer feel as though they are actually in the scene, which makes it a favorite among action movies. As an example, let's make a tracking shot of this dude jumping off a crane. The easiest way to get the camera to follow the location of the character is simply to go to the camera constraints tab and select the copy location constraint. Then go under the drop down and select the character rig so that the camera's location is constrained to it. Now the camera is stuck to the character though, which is probably not what you want. So we can select the offset parameter, which will allow us to move the camera away from the character while still allowing it to follow the location of the character. You can now even animate the camera's location and rotation while preserving the constraint, allowing for more dynamic camera movements. Alright, so next up on the list is the orbiting shot, which is simply when the camera orbits around a subject. Oftentimes, this type of shot can be used to put the audience's focus on a central object or create a sense of chaos and uneasiness. To do this in Blender, we can click Ctrl A, then add a circular curve. After positioning the circle so it's around our object, we can add a follow path constraint. Then under the dropdown, select the circle as the path we want our camera to follow. Now if we keyframe the offset parameter, we can animate our camera moving around the circle. Circle. To make it so the camera stays tracked onto whatever is in the center of the circle, we can add a track to constraint and select our subject under the drop down, leaving us with a cinematic orbiting shot. Alright, so now we move on to handheld shot. This type of camera move is usually identified with shakiness, which adds a sense of grittiness and realism by mimicking how normal people usually record in day-to-day -day life. To create this organic, natural, non-GMO style in Blender, we need to open up the graph editor and access the location and rotation curves for our camera's animation. Then we can select one of these curves, go to the modifier tab, and add a noise modifier. As of right now, this leaves your camera looking like it's glitching out but we could adjust the strength and scale parameters to get a more natural randomness on that particular channel. Adding this subtle randomness to the other channels using the same modifier method will leave you with a natural looking handheld shot. Okay, next up is Snorri and first person camera shots. 
This is the type of shot where the camera is actually attached directly to the subject. When the camera is pointed at the subject, we get a snorry shot, which is most often used to convey a sense of disorientation in cinematography. Flip it the other way around and you essentially get a first person shot, which is used to make you feel like you are the character in the film. To get either of these shots in Blender, the key is to add an empty, then use the copy location and rotation constraints on that empty. Under the drop down in each of those, you can select the character or subject. Now you could take your camera and just parent it to the empty. This essentially causes the camera to mimic the motion of the character while still giving you the freedom to move it as you wish, allowing you to get both snorry and first person shots. Alright, before you run off and go make your own shots, here's a few tips and tricks you may want to keep in mind. First, remember when animating a camera in Blender, you don't want to make it follow the movements of the subject exactly. Rather, you want the camera to lag behind your subject's movements, since this is more in line with how cameramen film in real life. Another tip is using the depth of field setting in the camera parameters, which will allow you to blur the background of your shots instead of having everything be in perfect focus. You can even select a specific object under the dropdown to make the camera dynamically change its plane of focus as the object moves. <sighs> okay, I think that's everything. Here's a camera, knock yourself out, bye.